Now, growing up, my favorite part of the manger scene, uh, and I love the manger scene that we would set up uh, weeks before Christmas and then uh, take down uh, days after Christmas. I love the manger scene, but my favorite part of the manger scene was to see all the characters, all the different people that inhabited it. Uh, but actually, my favorite part of that manger scene uh, was the star that would attach to the top of it. It was a beautiful piece of cut glass, uh, multicolor. It really attracted the eye. And I loved seeing that star uh, growing up. Um, as the years after I've grown up, the years I spent at seminary and studying uh, the Bible story, uh, not to be cynical, but... Uh, in some ways, I found it uh, very dismaying to learn uh, that the story that I made up in my manger scene with the shepherds and angels and baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the star is actually not an accurate reflection of what the Bible or how the Bible tells the story. In fact, um, what I had assumed about that story uh, was, was inaccurate. Uh, because the truth is that uh, the Gospel of Luke, which is what we read uh, on Christmas Eve, which has the story of the angels and the shepherds uh, and Jesus and Mary and Joseph in the manger scene, does not contain the story of the Magi. That in fact, uh, the story we read this morning of the Magi appears in the Gospel of Matthew, um, and in particular, it's, it's, it's this central story that Matthew tells about the nativity scene. And the truth is, that story occurs years after the birth of Jesus. Most scholars believe this. The arrival of the Magi, the visit by the Magi. In fact, if you read the story, if you pay close attention to it, there is no mention of three of them. That in fact, uh, the reason we associate sometimes three magi is because of the three gifts that were given, but there is no indication uh, that they, there were three of them, and there is no indication that magi represented kings of any kind. In fact, magi were scholars, astronomers, astrologists, seekers of knowledge. And I know you might find this, this kind of scandalous, but the truth is there's no mention that any of them were men. We just assume. And so uh, I remember growing older and reading the scripture and studying the scripture and beginning to realize that the story I had imagined in my head is not really an accurate reflection of what was written in scripture itself. It's more based on a hymn we just sang this morning than anything else. And to be truthful, if you think about it, it's really a weird story. It's a very odd story. Uh, these magi who come from the east, who come to Jerusalem and bump into Herod, and uh, Herod asks what they're looking for, and they say the king of the Jews... And then they, uh, Herod encourages him to find them and come back and report to them. It's a very odd story. What's interesting in the Gospel of Matthew is this is the only story about the birth of Jesus. And it has one little line about Jesus was born before Matthew goes into this great big explanation of the Magi. As if the Magi were the central part of what happened on Christmas in the Christmas season. And that's odd. It seems in many ways to be a children's story, and that's how I've often thought of it. It's a kind of fun children's story, these magi searching uh, for a star, following the star, uh, and finally arriving and finding Jesus there. And the thing that always bothered me about this story the thing that always, that always kind of made me a little envious of this story is the Magi had a star they could follow. And I love that idea. God, I wish there was a star I could 
point to and say, hey, there's the presence of God. There's the miraculous. There's the amazing reality of God's love incarnate in the world. My God, if the Magi had a star, I want a star, right? And if I had a star, it'd be so much easier to find where God's presence is in the world. And so that always made me a little envious of them because the truth is, it's hard to find that kind of star in the world, right? That kind of place or space or recognition, something that points to this is where God is. God, I wish I had that kind of star. I yearn for that kind of star to follow. But what's what's interesting as I reflect on this, this reality is how did they know that was the star? How did they recognize that? How could they pick this one star among so many? I was struck, I, I know many of us have gone camping and uh, have gone to the beach or go on vacation and far away uh, from, from the city lights, um, go travel somewhere in the countryside where the light pollution is much, much less. And what often strikes me when I'm out uh, in the countryside, away uh, from all the city uh, lights, what amazes me is how many stars <laughs> are in the heavens. How many I mean, the, the sky is filled with thousands and millions of these lights. But unfortunately, as I live in the city with its light pollution, I don't get to see. Someone just posted recently on Facebook a picture out in the countryside of the stars and kind of a time lapse showing the beauty of the stars and how many thousands and millions of them there are. How beautiful it is. And it makes me wonder, how did these magi know in the millions of those stars, how did they know that was the one to follow? I mean, some people speculate, well, it must have been a supernova, or some, in some way it had to be shining brighter than others. But the story doesn't necessarily say that. They just knew this one star to follow. Somehow they recognized. And what strikes me about that is I wonder how they were able to follow and see that one star. And it occurs to me, we live in a world in which there are lots of stars and we're just lots of opportunities, lots of things out there that could distract our attention. And it's hard to figure out which stars point to God and which don't. We debate, we struggle with that question. Which star shows God incarnate? Which star is present in the world? And so there's something I want to learn from this story is how did these magi recognize the star? And as I reflected on the story, a few things came to me. One is, the first thing to find the star is they had to look up. They had to have their eyes on the horizon up to the sky. They had to be looking for the star to find it. And it's so easy in our lives to have our eyes kind of down uh, on the ground, plodding in the busyness and business of life. It's so easy for us to, to just be focused on what's forward that we don't even begin to look for the miraculous and possible stars that point to the miraculous around us. The second thing that struck me about them is that these magi... Uh, who yearned for and saw this star, who were looking to the sky, is that they were actually searching for it and wrestling together to find it. We often assume the Magi came from different places in the world, when in fact the text itself says they came from one country. They were a community of scholars seeking the star. They were debating, and I can imagine talking with each other and saying, do you see this or do you not see this? In other words, in order to see the star, not only did they have to look up, but they had to be part of a community together that looked for it. They had to listen to each other. They had to debate with each other, I imagine, 
to decide, yes, this is the star. And what's amazing about them, not only did they look for it or as a community discern it, but they had the courage to leave home to follow that star. They weren't guaranteed to find something miraculous. In fact, they're going to a place that uh, they probably would least expect to find God's wondrous incarnate love around there. They had to have courage to leave their home to seek it out. And another last interesting detail, there's the line in this text in which, and this is what struck me this week, in which it says, when they saw the star, they were filled with joy. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. In other words... What's interesting about that is not when they found Jesus that they were filled with joy. What's interesting is just the very act of seeing the star brought joy to them. As if the hint is, those things that bring you joy, that's your star. That's how you recognize where God's presence is in the world. Those things that bring you that joy is how you recognize the right star to follow. Whether that joy is uh, caring for your children or whether that joy is some work you do, uh, whether that joy is advocating um, for particular issues, whether that joy uh, is being in community with friends and family, recognize that joy and you know that's the star where God's presence is made manifest. Now, anybody here heard of a, a man named Ignatius of Loyola? Has anybody ever heard of Ignatius of Loyola? So some of the pastors. Uh, Ignatius of Loyola. He was a Spanish nobleman who lived about the 16th century. Uh, and uh, as a young man, he was always, you could describe him yearning uh, to find, um, find his star, what his purpose in life was, and as a young boy growing up into his teenage young man's life, he thought it was being in the military and being a soldier and sought glory and honor and his heroism and, and working very hard to, uh, to achieve what he thought was what his calling in life was. And then at a very young age, he was engaged in a war and was hit by a cannonball that did severe damage to his legs. And so he had to return home and had to be taken care of, a number of surgeries. Uh, and so he led, laid in bed uh, for almost over a year. And his dream of who he was, his star, was, that, uh, was, was taken from him. And so he was in a period of desolation, a time in which he, what he thought was supposed to bring him joy. Now he was suffering and he began to read a series of books, of books about saints and a book about the life of Jesus. And he began to get to see uh, that actually maybe he was being called to a different kind of life. Uh, and he began to pray about this. And eventually Ignatius became the founder uh, of what is called the Order of the Jesuits. Um, I, I have Roman Catholic friends who joke with me that we Presbyterians are Jesuits of the Protestants. Uh, focus on the presence of God in the world and the focus on justice and peace. But he founded the Jesuits and also uh, Ignatius became famous for the, what is called the spiritual exercises of Ignatius. He became famous for these spiritual practices which people do these very days and they are all focused on one question. All it is about it is you can do it for 30 days, you can do it for a year, you can do it rather intensely or you can do it over a longer period of time. These spiritual exercises, uh, use of prayer and imagination, all they are concerned about is with how do you discern God's spirit in the world? How can you tell in a way what star is pointing to God and what isn't? And his argument was that that's what the spiritual life is about, is being able to discern 
what is of God or where, those star, where that star may lead us and those false paths we may take. And he geared and has become famous for these spiritual exercises to attune your eye to see the star. Now, this is an odd story to have as the whole basis uh, for um, uh, the birth of Jesus, to tell this one particular story about who, uh, about, about the birth of Jesus, these magi who come. And, it, and it's an odd way, in part because I think Matthew wants to make a very important point, wants us to understand that really the magi are us. The magi are the church. And we, like the church, must be looking for the stars, seeking the stars, must be as a community wrestling with and discerning together where the star of God might be and shine in the world. That we look and discuss, but we also must be willing to, to find that joy as a church and be willing to risk leaving the building to point to where that star might show us. And that star appears among the strangest people and places in the world. And yet we are called to seek out that star together. That's our invitation, I hope, for all of us in this season of Epiphany, is to be looking, is to journey together as a community, to bring ourselves out into the world, and to share the gifts we have uh, with God's presence in the world. To God be the glory this day and forevermore. Amen.